lens is so tiny and discreet, it is also so light that when it is stuck to my camera I don't even feel it. It is packed with all the necessary sharpness and fast autofocus that it made my shooting experience a lot smoother and more importantly, a lot more fun. So yes, having fun and Sony camera are two worlds that are not contradictory. They can get along pretty well actually. And this kind of light yet powerful lenses are the one helping to achieve that. For a bit of background, about a year ago I made a video talking about the 35mm focal length and why I felt like it was the most difficult lens to shoot with. Long story short, the two main points of the video were that one, the 35mm focal length can be boring to shoot with. It shows the world with almost the exact same perspective that we have with our own eyes, so you don't have any wow effect from a super wide angle or the compression of a telephoto lens. The second point was that the only 35mm lens I owned at the time was the Sigma 35mm. 1.4. It is an awesome lens, there's no question about that, but it is just way too heavy and too bulky to consider it a daily driver for street and travel photography. You really don't want such setup to be hanging around and breaking your neck all day. That said, I had a strong will to fix that and get better at composing and basically better at using a 35mm lens, so I got the cheapest and lightest alternative for the Sony full frame system, the Samyang 35mm f2.8 pancake lens. As of today, I still believe it is a very good lens for the price, but obviously it has some flaws. Um, the build quality is pretty much what you can expect for, for the price, but the autofocus performance and the especially the ghosting in backlit situation can be quite frustrating and limiting the use cases of the lens. So background explained, let's talk about this Sony Zeiss 35mm f2.8 that I got to see if it can fix some or ideally all the issues and give the best of both worlds premium performances in a small light package. Before elaborating on that, I want to quickly address the 35mm focal lens, but in just a few words, the Sony Zeiss is better than the Samyang, as we could guess, but it is not perfect, unfortunately. And considering the price difference, it might not be the solution I would recommend to everyone. I know that you may be confused when I say that 35mm is a boring focal lens to shoot with, but let me explain. As I said before, 35mm is a focal length that is very close to how we perceive the world with our own eyes, so there is just no visual trick to exploit. A good image taken at 35mm is a good image because of the subject, because of the light, because of the well thought composition, because of a nice color combination, or because of the uniqueness of the moment captured, and all of these require one or a combination of the following factors, skill, knowledge, experience, planning, and a bit of luck. 35mm is the focal lens that will put your photography skills to the test, so at the same time can be the ideal lens to identify your strengths and weaknesses. Being aware of those, you can define a clear path to make steady progress over the medium long term. What I mean when I'm saying that 35mm is the boring focal length is not that the photos taken at this focal length are boring. What I mean is that good photos taken at 35 are demonstrations of one photographer's skill, experience, and dedication. So first, both the Samyang and the Sony lens benefit from the same awesome feature, which is the compactness and the weight. I really noticed a clear shift in my attitude towards using my Sony a7 IV and overall towards photography when I first got the Samyang lens one year ago. The Sony a7 IV is my most feature-packed camera and the one that I can customize the most to my own liking, but it was always ruined by some heavy and bulky lenses that made it complicated um, to use it as a daily driver. One crucial point I want to address in this video is the importance of the ergonomics and ease of use of a camera setup. Recently it is easy to be hyped by the crazy spec sheets of newly released camera and forget about the weight of it and also the lenses you would stick it to. Or on the other hand there is a lot of hype around older, a bit clunky to use cameras that look pretty. You want to find a good balance of course but for me the Sony a7 IV which is really not a pretty camera, we can agree on that, is the one that um, when paired with compact lenses is the most fun to use and friction free so I can forget about the camera and focus on what really matters, the photography. Now talking about where the Sony and the Samyang differ and first is the weight. The Sony is slightly heavier, it weighs around 120 grams while the Samyang is only 85 grams but to me they are both in the category of extremely light lenses, the difference is so marginal that you can't feel it so this is definitely not a factor that you should base your decision on. The build quality is obviously better on the Sony lens. The Samyang is mostly plastic. It feels cheap, but it worked well for me. 
the Sony is made out of metal and feels more premium. Build quality is another factor to me that is not very important. Unless you have an accident or something, you really don't get anything more from a lens that is made of metal compared to one made of plastic, if we assume that both have exact same image quality and same performances. The Sony lens has a weather ceiling according to the spec sheet, but interestingly, it doesn't have any rubber gasket around the screw, so I guess you are totally okay if there is some rain and dust going on the front of the lens, around the focus ring and all that, but if you are really unlucky and something gets between the lens and the sensor, you can have trouble, I guess. The Samyang also has no rubber gasket around the screw and it is not weather sealed, so I guess here the point goes to the Sony. In terms of autofocus performance, the difference is not huge when used in autofocus continuous. Both lenses are very fast and accurate to acquire focus in the center part of the frame. Where the Samyang struggles a bit more is when you use tracking mode and you have your subject going from one edge to the other of the frame. The Sony is slightly better at keeping focus in this situation, but it is not perfect. It's also better at keeping the eye in focus when you are shooting portraits and when your subject is moving or when you are moving your camera. The sharpness is also an element where I did not see a big difference between the two lenses. I can remember which photos I took with which lens because I was the one behind the camera but I am pretty sure you cannot really take them apart. I am not a pixel peeper but sometimes I like to punch in to check the sharpness. Both zoomed in and zoomed out, the sharpness and micro contrast is absolutely good on both lenses. Still I think the Sony is slightly sharper which gives me a bit more room for cropping. Where the Sony is significantly better is when shooting backlit uh, and dealing with flare and ghosting. And I'm not against flare in itself because sometimes I actually find that it can look quite good. Uh, but the problem is with the Samyang lens is that it turns more into a ghosting effect. You lose a lot of contrast over a big part of the frame when shooting backlit depending on how you position your camera. You have significantly less of it with the Sony but once again it is not a lens perfect for backlit shooting situation I would say. Even though it comes with this small and quite cute lens hood, it doesn't really change because whether it's on or off the lens, really the final image really doesn't change. And talking about the lens hood, I want to mention a few extra things. And first is the lens hood. Despite not being good at cutting the flare, it is very useful for me to shoot photos and videos at the same time. I bought a tiny ND filter that I screw on the lens hood and keep it in my pocket. I shoot photos without the hood. And when I want to capture a short video clip, I screw the hood that has the filter on. It is much simpler to put the lens hood on compared to screwing on and off a filter on the lens. You can also, for example, screw a diffusion filter on the lens and still being able to put the lens hood on with the ND filter. So it makes this kind of filter combination quite easy and fast to use for your photography and video needs. The Sony lens being very sharp and when paired with the Sony a7 IV, I have plenty of megapixel even when I use crop mode. I think I am more comfortable punching in at 50 mm with the Sony compared to the Samyang, which is good and gives me a bit more flexibility when out shooting. Those two lenses open only at f2.8, but I still believe you can take absolutely beautiful portraits with them. f2.8 on full frame gives you still plenty of bokeh, so that should not be a concern when purchasing those lenses. Of course, 1.4, 1.8 gives you more, but those lenses are not compact enough. Night photography is also totally possible at 2.8 at 35mm because it's quite a wide lens. You can reduce the shutter speed and make use of the eyepiece for a clean shot, or you can bump up the ISO and brace the noise if you need a little bit more speed. Now let's talk money and which one I will keep. The Sony delivers obviously a bit more performance but does that really justify the price difference? I'm not really sure. You can find the Samyang at $220 and the Sony at $600 which makes it almost $400 more expensive. Since I really felt in love with this kind of compact 35mm lens and I plan to use it a lot more in the future, um, I can justify keeping the Sony. But if you want a light and cheap 35 to complement your set of lenses and you plan to use it only occasionally, maybe the Samyang is a better option. The only risk is that you will experience something similar to me. You will love it and use it a lot more than you anticipated and start uh, noticing the frustrating aspects of it. But as I often say, this would not be money lost, I think. You can resell it and upgrade for the Sony or something else. Even if you lose a little bit of money in the trade, you bought yourself a lesson and you bought yourself the right to use a lens for an extended period of time to have a better opinion on it. If you have no compact lenses for your full frame system as of now, I am 100% sure that you will greatly benefit from getting either of the Sony or the Samyang. I hope this video helped a little bit and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!